we were in negotiations for investing in real estate. They're winning, they're making money. Hey everyone, welcome to the Real Estate Educators Podcast, where we provide the education you can build on. I am your host, Kevin Amalsh. This podcast is different than anything we've seen. We don't only focus on the success of real estate investors, but on the content creation behind that. I want to help more real estate investors and more content creators, more influencers make money. If you like what you hear, even if you don't, hey, do me a favor, give me a five-star review and share this episode with a pal. This is going to be a really fun episode because a long-time friend of mine is joining us today, Mr. Jared Seidenberg. Jared, we've known each other for, gosh, I don't even know, right before I hit record, we were talking about that. I can't even pinpoint that because... We, you moved in across the street from me. Our kids are growing up together. We became yep. friends super fast, drinking out in the driveway. Yeah, heck yeah. And uh, you, were, you were an attorney working for your mom's company that time. You were running a pretty large collection operation. And as that was winding down, you, you and I were talking a lot, like, what's next for us? And by that time, we've already done some real estate deals together. You're definitely fascinated by investing in real estate. Um, you had some experience there. And you went off on your own to do private practice. And we hired you immediately. Basically, as soon as you said, we're open for business, Pine Financial was one of your clients. And that was, gosh, eight years ago. So that's how long we've been working uh, in the real estate lending side together. Right in the middle of COVID, you decided to, to come on board on our payroll. You were stepping in as a COO. We thought it was a temporary thing at the time. And here we are, man, we're t- on this journey together. You're now the permanent COO, general counsel of Pine Financial Group. I am so glad to have you on the episode today. Oh man, Kevin, it is so awesome to be here. I am excited for this podcast. I'm excited for you and the audience to be able to listen to some of these things that you're going to do with this. I know we've been talking about it for quite a while and I'm just thrilled that I uh, got this thing launched and that I can come and hang with you for a couple minutes here. So thanks for having me, man. Dude, I appreciate you saying that. It's I've been having a lot of fun on other people's podcasts as their guests. And I'm like, why the heck are we not doing this? So you yeah. and I and the team, we, we put our heads together and here we are. And uh, you're going to be one of our first guests. And I'm really interested to peel back the onion a little bit, get to know you a little bit better and how you could help our audience make money. So that's why we're here today. I um, want you take us back. Like when you were working in the collection agency, tell us your story, man. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. So I kind of grew up in in real estate. My grandfather was a an attorney in town. Um, you know, he's no longer with us, but he he was the part of the formation of the real estate bar in, in the metro area. And you know, so I kind of grew up with this. He he helped to create the legal apparatus and some of the building blocks for one of the uh, nation's largest home builders. Uh, real estate's what we do. His parents and his grandparents built units on Colfax and Grape when he was growing up before the war and everything else. So. Real estate's just kind of in our in our blood for sure. And you know, as I, I went through law school and tried to figure out what I was going to do, uh, real estate was always in the background. I worked in, in litigation for a couple of years. And you know, as you mentioned, I kind of got sucked into the family business at the time that wasn't real estate. My mom had started a debt buying agency. So they were buying charge-off receivables from different lenders, mostly contract-based, auto loans, HELOCs. Anything with a with a contract behind it, including some student loans and things like that. Didn't really know what she was doing in terms of the legal end. Compliance was becoming a huge issue for debt buyers at that time. And so they hired me um, as when I was at my own practice. After litigation, I took a stop in a private practice doing my own thing. They hired me for a project. Uh, that project took the next 12 years of, of my life. It uh, sucked me in pretty significantly and I took over the operation and uh, yeah, we were running a big a big crew. We had 60 collectors on staff and 40 different uh, other staff members in various administrative capacities and executives. And we always had a real estate component to it though, because when we were dealing with these charge-offs and we would reduce them to a judgment, we were putting leading positions on real estate. So always stuck in the background of how important it is as a, as a homeowner to know what your chain of title looks like and, and the encumbrances that you could come up with. And um, yeah, as you said, that that company started to wind down. Uh, my mom and her partners decided that they wanted to go a different way. My mom was uh, dealing with some health challenges. And so she retired. I ran the company through wind down, took us years to do it. And uh, while that was happening, I decided that the next jump was going to be back into private practice. And 
of course, you were one of the first people to know that and uh, absolutely one of the first clients that we signed up down there at the law firm and I had a blast, right? I had a couple of partners, the one that I went to law school with, uh, good guys, uh, had a really neat uh, practice that we had built. Uh, but I knew that I always wanted to get back into small business. I love the operational side of things. I love the law, but I'm not one of those people that can just do it 100% all the time burns me out. Um, and so, yeah, you, you started looking for a COO and I uh, twisted your arm a little bit and said, let me come help. And you graciously let me and, and we're just growing this thing now. So uh, I love being at Pine. Uh, it, it's awesome. It takes all the different skill sets that I've learned over the years and kind of puts them onto one plate. And I can access all those different things and experiences that I've had. And um, I think it's a great fit. So I, I love what I do these days. Yeah, and I definitely want to get into Pine because what we're doing here, Jared, is helping real estate investors and influencers. And, and the content creation is one of the best, if not the best marketing uh, mediums that you could have. And, and yeah. we believe that as a company to our core, add value, add value. So I want to get into that for sure because you and I share that. Um, but let's go back into the real estate just a little bit. You and I did a handful of new development projects, one bigger new development project, yeah. which we are still yeah. in today. Right. Yeah. We're I, don't still know, I don't know how many years that's been. It's been yeah. well over 10 years. We've been working on that thing, but tell us a little bit more about your real estate investment experience. Yeah. yeah. So we've been involved in a bunch of different syndications and uh, multifamily developments over the years. And I was trying to decide before we got on this, I think that it's 43 doors uh, that we put up together. Uh, while the multifamily boom was going, you know, we took that from building the slot home product and in, in Colorado, where you could get a, a lot and build it down the, the side with the side load garages and the alley access and all that. And they've stopped some of that stuff here in our town. But uh, yeah, we've done a ton of that stuff and the 80 acre new development that you're talking about that's still going out there, rooftops and all pretty cool to see it, you know, and of course, all the stuff that we've done at Pine. Uh, but the real estate investing has always been hugely important for, for me, no matter what part of my career I was in, uh, I needed some of that outlet. And uh, it's just been amazing. You've been a great business partner on it. So I appreciate you, man. Well, I appreciate that, man. And and that's that really is core of who you and I are. And one of the things we recently started doing with our own team is every month we do a little mastermind group. And I know I don't want to get too far off topic here, but it's been a little fun, a lot of fun doing this with you, but we get our entire team in the conference room and Hey guys, what real estate investment are you working on? How can we help you grow your wealth? And that's just a little added value that we do for our team. Yeah. Um, is there well, any common or anything the, you want to say about that? Yeah. I mean, the cool thing about it, Kev, is that this really is at, our, at the core of what we do, right? It, it permeates everything at Pine. So this mastermind that you put together is just a perfect offshoot of just who we are as, as a company and how we value our, our time. And it's been great, like you said, to get in the conference room and listen to what people are talking about and doing and the excitement that they've got on their yeah. first deal or their 12th deal or whatever it is. It's just, it's so good to just be in that, that world. And, and really, I mean, to, to this podcast, uh, that's, that's the key, right? Is learning how other people are doing it. You don't always have to replicate it, but you know, you can't have every experience yourself. So learning what other people have done and taking that information in and having a good group to bounce it off of, I think is just one of the most important things in life. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to talk about that. <clears throat> I want to talk about how we've been so successful as a company and how we've been so successful as individual investors because we focus on adding value first. Um, that's what I think real estate investors and, and agents and lenders and anybody who's out there trying to create communities need to understand. So let's let's peel back the onion, like I said, and, and get into our marketing department. Like, Talk to me about how Pine Financial operates on the marketing side. Yeah, I, I love this topic because the marketing is so huge for what we do. And, and really, in this regard, easy because we, we understand what our principles are. And, and that education is the foundation for it, right? We, at Pine, you know, we say we work together to help you succeed, right? And that, that is so core to our beliefs that, you know, we, we could be bold and callous lenders and just say yes to deals. And if they default, we know that we're in a good position because we have good underwriting and everything else. But that's not what we're here for. We, we want to see people be successful and enjoy their careers and, and be able to get that freedom that we talk about all the time. And so everything we do is tinged with this concept of 
you know, it doesn't always have to be about a loan for Pine. Sometimes it's just a 20 minute conversation with someone looking at a deal and, and maybe they aren't looking at it right. Maybe they are, but us to be here on the other side of the phone and have that conversation on the front end and help them through it is great. So when we market Pine, we're always thinking about the way that we can add value to the room we're in or the placement that we've got on a particular ad or to our audience in general. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, do we want to talk to you about loans because that's our core business? Sure. But if that's a small sliver of the relationship and it grows into this larger thing of being part of a community and knowing that you got trusted advisors around, then we're here for that too. And so um, I think that we, we've we got a really good focus uh, on being able to educate people and still fulfill the business needs at the same time. Pretty cool. Yeah, I can't add a lot to that. I, I will say this, in marketing and in sales, we know that people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And when you're the trusted advisor, as you described, Jared, that's breaking down one of the barriers to the sell, right? And by creating the content and by being on the stage and by being behind the microphone or um, behind the newsletter, that's doing all three of those things, really. Um, but if, as you describe, we're not able to close a deal with an individual, but we're still adding value to their life, they're likely to refer us, yes? Oh, all the time. I mean, that's, that's the key is that they know they can call and say, hey, this is what I'm looking at. What do you guys think? And then someone else, I was just in a room a couple of uh, weeks ago where uh, it was a bunch of new investors. We had an experienced investor that had used Pine before and a new investor raised their hand and said, hey, I, wh where do I start? And the experienced investor says, just call Pine. They'll help you. They just tell them what you're doing. Tell them what you're looking at. Give them all the stuff. And they'll tell you what they think. And to me, that, that, that was one of the best moments I've had in a room full of people and investors with Pine is the trust that someone that's done this a bunch, they're not saying, well, call me, I'll help you. They're saying, call Pine. They know that we'll give them good unbiased advice. In that regard, I, I don't know how much better we can get with our customers. That's just amazing stuff. Uh, and I want to dig into that event. <clears throat> but before we do that, th that's right. So the referral where I was going with this, is that referral? Yeah. Um, they already trust you, man. Like if, if, so, if they're calling you because someone told them to call you, now all they got to do is like you, yeah. right? It's, and, and then you, you get the sale. So that's why adding value, adding value, adding value is so essential in, in marketing and in your marketing campaigns. So now let's get into that specific meeting. Because I know the one you're talking about. Why don't you describe for us what that meeting was, what we were trying to accomplish and put together and how that went. And we've always had uh, out of the office events, happy hours and things that we sponsor and groups like that. We're doing what we call the pine panels right now. They're a quarterly event. Uh, we hold them both in Colorado Springs, south of Denver, and in, in Denver itself to be able to get, you know, a big core of our of our group involved. And the idea is that we're going out into the community with a panel full of experts that are there to answer questions and be just this resource, right? And we don't charge for them. We'd like everybody to come and be free-flowing in their conversation. Um, we hold them at, at venues that offer food and some beverages, and we'd like everybody to contribute and help their waiters and waitresses because that's what we're there for. But uh, these are these are just our ability to get out in front of people. And this one in particular that we're talking about was a, a legal panel. And so I sat on it, and then we had another local attorney down in the Colorado Springs area that came as well. And it, it really was no agenda. We just, uh, both myself and the other attorney on the panel, panel said, hey, we're here for you guys. We don't represent you, can't give you specific information, not your lawyer, right? I don't know how many times I might've said that, uh, but uh, we're just there to answer questions and, and we do it just for free. And you, you get people to call you and they, they appreciate it. They wanna know it. These are questions that they may be afraid to ask in a different forum and they come out and just give you the opportunity to help them. And boy, that's really cool stuff. The Real Estate Educators Podcast is brought to you by Pine Financial Group. Pine Financial Group is a private lender specializing in value add bridge lending for real estate investors. This is accomplished by raising private money from individual investors and lending that money out in short term real estate loans. Pine operates one of the coolest public mortgage funds on the market because it brings consistency and security to your investment portfolio without giving up on returns. 
the fund pays its investors a flat 8% return with monthly distributions. There is a low minimum investment and no lockup period. That's right. You can request all of your money back at any time without any fees. Diversify your portfolio out of Wall Street and into Main Street with the Pine Financial Group Public Fund, PFG Fund 5. Find out more at pinefinancialgroup.com. That's pinefinancialgroup.com. This, we are very proud of these pine panels. Now, this evolved from our happy hour. So a lot of our listeners probably are, are aware of those. But do you want to walk us through the process of what we were doing with the happy hours and, and the speaker and how we migrated to panels only and more limited? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that you've always been really adamant about, and, and rightfully so, is that we're there for the content. And so we don't want to just be having beers in a room. You got to bring people in and, and have a topic that they can talk about. And we were doing a monthly event, a monthly happy hour. And frankly, we, the attendance was waxing and waning a little bit, you know, outside of COVID. People weren't always coming back to some of these live events. And then we realized that there were some other groups that had changed their format a little bit. So we started looking at what these other folks were doing and where their success was. And we decided that right now for where Pine's at, it would be better to go to a quarterly focus, one big event, uh, more structured. So we have an actual panel of people that's Q&A. There's some presentation involved in some of them, uh, but it's all content driven. So we want to provide things that people want to know about that are they're worried about, things that are going on in their portfolios and, and then give some room for just all the spontaneity of the questions that come out because you never know what someone is is wondering about or what idea is in their head that they need a little bit of help with. And so that's our way to get out in front of them and do it in a pretty concentrated way. And I, I really like the panels because uh, they give it some structure without it being just us talking at people uh, because that's not always effective either. So it's a pretty they, good interactive group. They could bring in whatever questions they want. Oh, yeah. I mean, whatever. they could come and they could sit and do nothing and just enjoy a, a, a meal, or they can participate and get involved and be interactive with it. Yeah. And and sometimes there's some little bit of lively debate. You know, we had at, yeah. the, at the legal panel, we had some difference of opinion in the, in the room. And that's great, right? Because none of us have the corner on the market. We look at things a little bit differently. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that you and I both share is that we're, we're always learning. Everything we do every day is about learning something new. And so I don't want to be in the echo chamber. I want to hear what everybody else has to say too. Um, and these are a great way to do it. Yeah. It gives us the opportunity to talk about what's current, right? What's going on in the market today. Right now. Um, and we don't charge for it because we're not trying to make money from it, right? What's the true value that Pine gets out of doing this? No, the true value is, is the give back. And we hope that if you've got a deal that you want to talk to us about, that you'll come and 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 ring us up or hit us on the internet or send us an email, but this is this is who we are, and so we we talk about this stuff every day, all day long in the office, and we want to bring it out into the community and and talk about it there. So um, the value we get is is the ability to interact with as many people as we can, learn ourselves, and provide some information along the way. Is there anything else on the education or content creation side that you think our viewers should know? Like, feel free, man, peel back the curtain. Yeah. We're a pretty transparent company. Is there anything that we could share with them that would help them? Yeah, I, I think that don't discount the 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 value of providing this educational piece and where it can take you in business and the people that you you interact with and and connect with along the way um, is is probably more valuable than a specific ROI that you can put out on it. You know that that ability to gain the type of um, consistency that you need and the credibility that you need out there. You know, I know we're all living in a Zoom world and we're on podcasts and doing the video thing all the time, but nothing better than being in a room full of humans and uh, hearing what they've got to say. So, you know, if, if you've got an educational component to what you do and you think that it, you're on the fence and you don't know if you want to step off the curb and do it, I'd just go for it. It is just exceedingly valuable and so fulfilling along the way. So we love it. Yeah. Yeah, and you got to be consistent with it. Like the consistency. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's um, hard. You, you mentioned ROI, which in the world of marketing, um, that's that's a, a power word or a, that's that's a sensitive word. I mean, you're spending dollars here, right? And you want to make sure you get your return on your investment. So this book I'm reading, Jared, I don't, I haven't shared this with you yet, but it's um it's called Belonging to the Brand, and it, it's talking about. Have you have you read it? 
No, I haven't yet. Okay. So it's about on my list now. It's about creating a brand and and here's a perfect example. Harley Davidson. So it's a motorcycle. Or Pantagonia is another one. But some of these companies, Lululemon, right? So they 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 overcharge for their product, but people pay it because they're they're like loyal to a brand and to the point where they they like belong to a community of people that are loyal to the brand, right? And and then all of a sudden, one of the things he talks about is are you sticker worthy? So if you get your i computer, your iPhone or your your iPad out and and someone puts a sticker of your logo on it, that's that's when you know you've you've won. So the the why I bring all this up is because you brought up the idea of ROI. It's impossible, according to this author, to have an ROI when building a content-based marketing platform. So how how do you, and we struggle with this, man, so I know it's going to be a tough one yeah. for you to answer, but how yeah. how do you measure that? Well, gosh, it's such a good question, and you're right. It, this concept is tough because we talk about a lot that we know in our guts that this is the right thing to do, and we understand for ourselves that this is where we put a lot of our focus, but you know, you're a, you're a bottom line guy, right? And so we sit in meetings together and you challenge all of us to say, well, what are we doing out of it? What's it getting for the company? And, you know, what, to me, especially being involved in the, in the daily flow of the loans coming in and out and talking to our borrowers. One of the things that I love the most about what we've done with this brand is that people do return to us because they know they can trust us. And they know that we're knowledgeable real estate investors ourselves. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're doing educationally based content, that we're out there with a YouTube channel, with our pine panels, with our newsletters. And the information that we provide is is useful stuff. And the more people consume that and understand that we're not just telling them what we think they want to hear, sometimes we're telling them something that they don't want to hear, right? I mean, it's the whole adage is that sometimes you make more money not doing the deal than you do doing it. And, and we take that very seriously. And so, you know, I've been on the phone with borrowers that say, yeah, you know, I know there's a lot of other people out there in the marketplace, but I don't trust them and I don't know what I'm going to get from them. And so I don't even look, or maybe they have looked and, you know, they're a half a point one way or another, or they do something, you know, different with their loan product, but they come back to us because they know that when they're with RLOs, with you and I, with the rest of the organization, that they're getting the truth, that they're getting good, unvarnished opinions. They're getting value out of that. And at that point, they don't go looking at somewhere else because that brand identification is so important to them. They want the loan from Pine because they know that what comes with that is the rest of the team and people that care about their deal. And we're not cold and cookie cutter like some other lenders may be out there. And um, that's that's the brand. That's how we've accomplished that. And it's not insignificant to the way that we run this place every day. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and you're such a big part of that. We're in those we're in those marketing meetings every week, man. And and what I love about those is we all challenge each other, you know. And and you're right, and and you were right to push back. We can't have an ROI and everything, but obviously, <laughs> as a business owner, as a, right. someone who loves marketing, we we want that. So I'm always gonna I'm always gonna question that. But yeah, man, it's hard to it's hard to put an ROI on education. But I could tell you this: a lot of what we do doesn't cost us anything. So it doesn't cost us anything to write a, an article. I know you're writing an article right now. By the time this airs, it will be already delivered, but you're going to start doing your um, your YouTube, um, right? So well, actually, let's, let's start there. Start there. Where, what on YouTube are you planning? Yeah, so I, I want to be able to give back some insights that we get from the, the general counsel side of this business, right? I, we see a lot of stuff in different various uh, jurisdictions and municipalities. Um, we're in some interesting markets that do things differently than than other places do. And that's valuable information to be able to navigate some of the legislative stuff that's coming out. And so I want to be able to provide some content, you know, from my point of view, that's not just, I'm going to be your lawyer and here's my hourly rate, because I don't do all that stuff. This gives me some freedom to say, yeah, this is what the legislature wants to do. These are the public policy reasons behind it. Here's the reality of what may happen when it's in there. Or maybe it's something that's already passed or something that's coming down the way. I don't know, maybe we'll talk about LLC formation because that one seems to get uh, a lot of clicks whenever we talk about it. It's a it's a hot topic. And then I want to be able to to veer off that a little bit and talk you know more openly about the the way to run an organization 
in a transparent way that provides value and how that can provide some challenges too. I, the, the general counsel in me is always like, oh, I don't know how transparent we should be, right? And because you're just worried. It's a weird world out there. And then the COO in me and, and knowing how much we love the Pine brand is like, oh, everything should be transparent because that's how we do it. Well, there, you can accomplish both of those things. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And I think that's part of the stuff that I want to be able to provide on the YouTube channel. And really, I just want to give you a break because you've been towing the rope on that one for a long time. And uh, we all need to shoulder the load. It's a, it's a pretty cool resource. Well, it's interesting uh, you say that because I, I actually really enjoy it, right? I, know you I, it. I do have a heart for that. So this is going to be in addition to everything we're doing. So this is just more fine value, yeah. right? This is more value to our clients and our followers, yeah. Um, so I, dude, I'll be the first to say I'm I'm grateful for you to agree to do that. Oh yeah, I love it. I mean, like you said, it it doesn't cost anything. We're we're talking about it anyway. This isn't yeah, that's right. You know, it, it's not going to be some novel concept that we're not you know batting around in the office. And so why why not let everybody see kind of the way that this works and some of the thoughts that are going on. And uh, and I love what you just said because so many people think, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to educate people. What do my resources look like? You know what? What's my ad spend? What do I need in my budget for it? And you're so right. Some of this is just, it's not free. It takes time. It takes some effort. But, you know, you're not going out and hiring some big, fancy, splashy ad campaign or an ad agency or marketers. This is just stuff that you can do. And gosh, we live in this world where you flip on your webcam and you start recording. And if you've got a couple of things that you want to say, then get an audience to say it. And, uh, that's pretty darn cool. That's not the way it always was. So the access is is amazing and we might as well take a, take advantage of it. Yeah, I just, I just love I just love hearing you uh, talk because you and I are so much alike, man. We we really do have the same values and like I said, I'm happy to be on this ride with you. Yeah, man. This is the best ride to be on and uh, I tell you this all the time. I you know, we we could all be in a lot of boats, but uh, as long as we're in this one together, that's the way it rolls. So um, I'm happy to be here, man. Thanks for all the opportunity. Yeah, brother. Tell us, uh, tell us what Pine does, what you do, and how we get a hold of you. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Pine Financial Group. We've got four mortgage funds that we run. Uh, we talk about this all the time. We've got two very distinct sides of the business. We have investors that come in that are looking for a safe place to put their cash and get a pretty steady return on it as as they go. Gives them the ability to access a real estate market without having risk on one particular door. They're spread across the entire uh, asset base of the fund, which is pretty darn cool. And uh, on the other side, we're making loans to people that have big dreams and are trying to uh, make them come true. And so uh, fix and flips and uh, all sorts of rehab loans and some inline retail, uh, you know, that commercial space is getting a little bit weird right now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, we're watching that closely and we do some ground up construction and some bridge products for sure. And uh, we, we love to talk to people that are doing real estate. So, you know, whether you've got your first deal or your 40th deal, or you're looking at a deal and you just want to get some people on the phone that might've been through it and have some uh, information to share with you, we're here for it all the time. And so um, you can get us on our website at uh, pinefinancialgroup.com. Uh, you can get our LOs um, at their email addresses. Everybody here has uh, the first name uh, before the at symbol and then pinefinancialgroup.com. And on our phone, 303-835-4445. That's the old school way of communicating, but uh, you and I both love that stuff too. So yeah. uh, we're here for it, man. If, if you're looking to get in this business or you've been in it a long time, we'd love to talk to you. Agreed, a hundred percent. So, if you're looking to borrow money, you're looking for a, a, a passive investment. We got both, and I love this business, Jared, because we get to help both, right? And it's all about money, so it's that. But we get to help our investors make money, and our borrowers make money, and we just get to be happy in the middle. That's right. Oh, I tell you all the time that one of the things I love about this, instead of being in private practice, is that I get to do things that make people happy almost all yeah. the time, and uh, you don't always get to do that as a private practice lawyer. And, yeah. Uh, this is a pretty cool space to be in and uh, makes the days go very fast. It's easy to be yeah. here all the time. Yeah. So we're here. Yeah, we if, you're, if you're looking for us, we're probably here. And we have a lot of fun, right? Yeah, we do. 
All right, brother. Well, unless there's anything else, we're going to sign yeah. off here and we'll have you back on uh, different times as we progress through this, um, this series here, this, these episodes. But I just want to say one last time, Jared, I really, really appreciate everything you do for me and for Pike Financial. Thanks, Kev. I am so excited for you in this podcast, man. I wish you good luck in it. Let me know whenever you want me to come on. I'm here for it. Do it, man. Sounds good. All right. All right. Great. Hey. hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. If you did, please be sure to follow and leave us a review. Oh yeah, and tell a friend.